Welcome to Story Hour, a virtual meetup hosted by Wolf and Heron. I'm a very positive person, I think, and I wanted to tell this very positive, beautiful story that I actually think I might have already told here at the um, story hour. So there was maybe another reason that helped me back to tell this story again. But the story that I wanted to tell was about this park bench, the rolling hills in Germany at a leadership training I was sent to. I was super inspired, sat on this park bench. There was a little cemetery around me, um, a, a little church, and I was supposed to reflect on my values, it was a coaching exercise. And I sat on this park bench and all kinds of words, starting with a W, <laughs> that's the notes from, from that day, um, from that original story that I was going to tell, um, came to me. And W in German, W in um in, in English, it was all about world and values and um, creation, like all of, all of a sudden with Ws. And I realized that nothing of this was fulfilled in my current job. And um, there was a tough moment then on that park bench. And someone I told that story to as well said, you know, maybe on this park bench, the dead told you to live. And I left the park bench. And then four weeks later, I left the company um, that I worked for at um, that time that had sent me to this leadership training. And um, that was the original story that I wanted to tell you guys about. The dad told me to live on this park bench in the rolling hills in the German wine region, the biggest German wine region, beautiful story. And now you got to imagine that feedback sound from a concert, you know, that you get this like, <laughs> and it's not um, such a positive story, but it reflects very much the moment of my why, or like it kind of pulled me back into reality. And that happened last week. And um, last week I sent an email and um, actually a newsletter to some of my former jo German colleagues, you know, some of, of the people in my network. And it was about a, it, the, the email was about a remote leadership program, remote leadership in times of uncertainty, because my home country, Germany, is currently very, very hard hit by the fourth um, COVID wave. Um, everything is like <laughs> going crazy, going uh, well, the case rate goes up and the um, mute, uh, mood in Germany goes totally down. And I really feel that employers could have done a much better job in preparing people with more resiliency, with more warmth, with more, you know, connection across distance. And um, I think they just play a huge role in, in, in the pandemic in, in general. So I put together this offer and I sent out my newsletter. And a day later or so, I wake up because of the time difference to an email from a former female colleague of mine who is in charge of leadership development in Germany in this company. And the email basically read, um, <sighs> Sonia, you, you've written such a beautiful newsletter. I like it so much. But may I offer some feedback? First of all, I'm always thrown a little bit off by that question when the feedback then comes. <laughs> you know, like um, <laughs> if, you, if you actually are not really asked a question, if you, if you want to have the feedback. And then she went on and she said, you know, Sonia, and I also, this is also for a colleague of yours, you have such a warmth and you display such connection in the way you write. I'm like then really thrown off if then there is an offer that you have to pay for when there is so much warmth before in your email and when you reflect this closeness to people and this human approach to your work. How can you then, you know, offer me something to pay for? So we're talking about a billion dollar multinational company here. You know, we're not talking about 
like a little um, NGO or nonprofit organization that I sent this email to, but to a former female colleague of mine who is in charge of leadership development and probably also women empowerment. And I was like, oh, this is my why. You know, my why is to bring back humanity into leadership and to organizations and show leaders that being human and being connected and being warm is not an opposite of business. <laughs> and I was so, you know, taken away by this. I was so much like, oh God, this is what we're talking about. This is, you know, we have to go so far back. If even someone who deals with these topics day by day is um, almost offended by me charging for a service to do it, actually exactly that, you know, to bring back a more human approach to work, then that is my moment of my why. <laughs> Instead of the, the, the very positive Rolling Hills um, story all about the values. So, um, yeah, that is what I then decided for, to tell you this story about, um, about this email. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely. It was wonderful to have you back, Sonia. Okay. Thank you, Kara. <laughs> Let's see. What was what was powerful about that story? What should Sonia hold on to? Well, I'm um, I'm kind of amazed at the objection that you received. Just that somebody could be so philosophically ungrounded <laughs> as to think that way. You know, and she's probably not good at her job or qualified to do her job if that's really the way that she thinks. Because if she's involved in, um, you know, like leadership training and women's empowerment, and then she's like, oh, you can be nice or you can charge money for your services, but you can't do both. Uh, anyway, I think that. I think there's a lesson in that, obviously, that validates what you do, as I understand what you do. So you could really continue to draw from that over time, I think. I think it sends people off on like a Socratic sort of path of, you know, I guess if you can get people to ask themselves questions and to reason through things themselves, then that's a lot more powerful than telling them you know, essentially what I just said, which is that this is uh, like philosophically, this is not a, a well grounded argument and it's ridiculous and disempowering and unfair. So, but like, that's a kind of story that can cause people to ask themselves questions that they should be asking and draw their own conclusions. And it does cause me to like ask myself myself questions that I've maybe asked um, before, but you need to circle back to, you know, whoever you are. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you very much, John, for the feedback. I'm glad it made you ask yourself questions. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah, it seems like there's a really nice connection there between, um, between like, exactly what John was saying of so many businesses now are, it seems trying to move in the direction of telling stories and looking for impact and wanting to be like person focused instead of something else focused, whatever it was before um, and still is in a lot of places. And so I think that's a really good thing, um, like a very good sort of grounding point to discuss, you know, how you think about it and how you get to where you are. And um, I think there's definitely definitely an intersection um, if we're talking about women's empowerment, which I know is like just a small, small sub part of the whole story you shared, but of, you know, whether women get to choose whether to be nice or ask for things um, and whether we get to choose whether to, you know, I have another thing, but I think it comes back to like whether to be nice or to ask for 
or to properly value our time and our services. And that can be really difficult. Um, so I think there is some pretty cool intersections there that you could explore further and that would lead really well to to talking about um talking about a few different things depending on where you want to take it okay cool thank you yeah i think what they're bringing up is some of what i found really appealing about the story is that uh, so i think great stories often come from scenes or moments that are that are vivid but what i appreciate about actually both of the ones that you mentioned the rolling hills and then the email is that the moment itself is stepped back quite small and very very much in your head and very basic and introspective focused versus like this whole, whole ordeal happened and I think that the fact that you're able to do that, though, is quite powerful because the challenge, the conflict is in you and you're experiencing it. And I think that's part of what is creating this. Then what's resonating with us listening is introspective for us, too, as we're putting ourselves in your shoes of, of having sent that email and received that response. And so I think the fact that you can take something that is uh, introspective and find a moment for it is really cool. Um, and you also like, I just do want to point out one delivery moment that you did, Sonia, you, I think it was when you received the email and then you said, and then I took a breath or something like that. And then you, you physically took a breath. I think that's really helpful just to have, just to have a little bit of a moment like that. I think people are often afraid of that when telling stories, um and sharing something and it just helps us feel it a little bit more it helps us catch up and so that type of thing i think can be really really powerful within a story um so yeah it was kind of it was kind of fun listening to it and then meanwhile like neha in my head so i'm going to switch us to the experimentations i think both of these stories have the potential to be in a way go-to stories of yours that you can use to answer the question of why did you start your company? Why are you in this business? And you could also use to answer a variety of other questions. And you could also use in your coaching and in your work to describe some of the dynamics that are going on within organizations. And in that case, if you, as you evolve the story and have different versions of the story, I think what you would want to do then is add in a little bit more of the, the details maybe of what you were thinking or a little bit more of the so what for you. So you receive, you receive the email, you have this reaction, you're thinking through it and you're like, this is why. And then meanwhile, can you hint at some element of, of what the change could be mm -hmm. or how we could try to show up to not accidentally be a person who would send an email like that other person sent and make you feel like you felt in that moment. That's where I think uses of that story. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel that I know what you mean. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, other thoughts for experimentation or things that you're still curious about or want to hear more of? I feel like if you tied the two stories, you could tie the two stories together more seamlessly and make uh, the point a little bit more resonant, you know, because um, I don't know, they, they were both good stories, but they didn't, they weren't seamless. If, mm -hmm if that makes sense. And I understand the relation between them and stuff, but uh, yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. And also with the first story, sprinkling in a few details that don't necessarily need to be there to make the point, but just to anchor the audience's mind, you know, like the kind, did you notice the clouds passing or like the nature of the clouds, the breeze, the foliage, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. that's 
always helpful from a standpoint of being memorable. Mm. Yeah, I think I, I also very much know what you mean. I think, um, you know, I also had that feeling that there is more potential to tie them together. Can I ask one question? Um, yeah. The, um, the two stories were actually meant to be this one story, right? I wanted to, like, I didn't want to tell two mm. stories, but I wanted to tell you the story of you know the the why being so such a positive experience it was also scary there in the hills and you know like um there was a huge change the biggest change i ever you know made in my life uh, well not the biggest maybe maybe one of the biggest um but i meant to you know tell that story what what happened on the one hand and what happened um then as the next story how the story evolved um, from there and I wanted to make that one story was that um, because you were all talking about the two stories mm. that, so obviously that wasn't too clear that that was meant to be that way right so there's definitely potential to tie that more mm -hmm. to I, mean, I mean they definitely both felt like the answer to the prompt mm-hmm But I think, I think maybe one experiment would be how to, you, yeah, like the transitions to John's point is, you know, the first one setting it up as, and this is why I quit my job and started my business. Mm -hmm. And then somehow just having a cleaner transition to, or touch back on that. And this is why I'm still in this business yeah. or something like that, where you're Yeah. then it's like a, the same thread in a way. Right. Yeah. So my big recommendation was going to be that, um, that I don't know, Sonia, if you and I have like met on this before, but I don't actually know what your business is. So my big recommendation was going to be, mm -hmm. I would love to hear about it. Um, and I think putting an explanation of what business you're in now between mm -hmm. what we've been referring to as the two stories yes but let's call them these two moments, like these two pivotal moments, putting an explanation of what you do between those two things, I think would actually help with that a lot because then you have a reason to talk about it, to fill everybody in on backstory um, and then take us through to this email. And, and that I think is, can be your transition really easily yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yeah, you are you are absolutely right. So I started with this. I'm a very positive person, but may, maybe then I should have said I work as a coach and consultant, and I'm in this business to teach leaders. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Interesting ideas. What's fun too about those stories and this prompt is that I know that you will have to talk about these. And, and tell these stories in your work, you know, like it's just so it's just fun that it yeah. can be so applicable. And totally, you know, story hour totally helped me to develop that. The first story is really a, a long go-to story that I use all the time, you know, like I, I the Rolling Hill story and the dead told me to live um, is like my, 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 how I start talking about my why actually. Mm -hmm. So Awesome. Sarah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Sonia. And thank you, everyone, for the feedback. Thank you so much. Really helpful. <laughs> Visit wolfandheron.com to find out more about our story hours. <laughs>